Hi, Darren. So, uh, uh, how, how long have you been living uh, in a tent? Uh, about about four years now, or a little over four years, ever since I got out of prison. Oh, okay. uh, I, I, when I, I first moved out to Bend and uh, got had a good job, and uh, for three and a half years, I was building apartment complexes out there, and uh, I didn't have a girl at the time. I didn't have no really ties to nothing. Uh, so what I did with my check is what I did with my check. So I, I I enjoyed living in a tent, you know. I didn't have I didn't really have no responsibilities other than myself. So I just stayed in a tent. Well, now that I'm out of that job and came down here and out of work and everything, I, I regret that decision because I, I should have stockpiled some money and you know, for a place or later on. And I didn't really think that later on I'm going to get sick of you know living like this and uh, I'm going to want to settle down and get a girl one of these days, you know. And um, so now, so now I'm kind of caught in a pickle a little bit, but I see it'll come up. So you're you're planning on getting a job again and then yeah, getting different. Yeah, I'm looking for work right now. Just been a little bit tough down here. Yeah, yeah. What is your perspective like when you say it's tough down here? Is it because you're is the environment here tough or is it no? No, it's not that. I think it's I think it's my past. You know, I did uh, I did close to 20 years on my last sentence. You know, in Nevada, and uh, I think it's my record has a, has a lot to do with everything. You know, getting a job. Yeah. And then right out the gate, their parents, you know, all the tattoos, and they, they automatically think that uh, I'm a thug or no good, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't really get a, a fair shake right out the gate, you know? I feel it, yeah. Is there, is there, you notice that there are a lot of people that are homeless, too, that have been in prison or in jail? Oh, yeah, I'm sure they are. are, are, are or mental institutions, you know? Mental institutions? Yeah, a lot of, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of mental illness in, in homeless, homelessness out here, you know? What would you say? You would you say that's like eighty percent of it? That people living out here have mental issues. Yeah, that's a good. I mean, I, I I don't know about percentage wise, but there's more so out here because of mental illness than than other reasons, other factors. You know. Right. Uh, how about we noticed? Uh, well, how about how about you? Like you, are you able to feel like you can be healthy while living out here? As yeah. far as physically healthy and whatnot. Yeah. You don't have a, you have access to everything you need. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, follow up with the doctors as well as I should have, but I'm fairly healthy, you know. I'll be 50 in a week, and I think I'm doing pretty good. Me too. I'll be 50 in August. Yeah. So, uh, do you find a lot of value? Do you find any value in, in this kind of lifestyle, or are you at the point now where you just want no, to no, the, no? It's uh, there's plenty of times when I'm I've been perfectly content being homeless, you know. Uh, uh, lately, me and my girls been bumping heads a little bit over because of the tight quarters and shit. But, but for the most part, uh, she's been she's been on the street for a while too. And uh, she's uh, for the most part, we're happy with it. But we're, we're looking for a place right now. We got a uh, a fifth wheel we're gonna pick up here in a couple days. Now we just gotta find a spot to put it. You know, a trailer court that'll allow it or you know somebody's property or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it a good, a good chunk of change to buy that fifth field? Actually, uh, no. Just getting it on the road is a little, couple bucks. But uh, they was given to us. Yeah, and it's, in, and it's in, it's in really nice shape too. Obviously, you were saying because of the tattoos and your record that there's a lot of pressure to integrate into society where you have a job and a roof over your head. Do you feel like the person? It's really, really hard to get a job, or do you feel like it's just something you gotta try a lot harder at than most people? Oh, it's something I need to try a lot harder at than most people, you know. Uh, you, once you, I once you, I you land did, a job, you did, like I'm, construction work or something like yeah. that. Yeah, once I land a job, I have no problems keeping it, and, and my employers never have a problem with me. They they don't regret it at all, you know. And uh, so it's it's just that chance I need with somebody, you know. Uh, so for them to get to know me and shit, I I never used to be able to stay out three or four weeks at a time, I'd get out of prison and I would run amok until I got busted again and go back and I really didn't care. I did three little numbers out here in Oregon a couple years apiece and every time I just got out and did the same thing, same thing, same thing. And then uh, this last time I did, like I said, I almost did 20 years, 18 years, 10 months. And uh, it cured me, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna do no crime till ever again, you know. If I gotta be here homeless and canning for my money, then I'll do that the rest of my life before I'll go back to prison, you know. For nine years, I didn't think I was going to get out, you know. I had a life sentence for nine years, a uh, habitual criminal. And it, 
it took, uh, took me through nine years of, of appeals to get that off of me because it was a, they can't give you the habitual criminal on top of the statute sentence and they, they did that you know so it was an illegal sentence they had to do with do away with one or the other but for nine years I didn't think I was going to get out and then even after I got that overturned I did another nine and some change and uh there anything could have happened you know uh could could have caught a case in there uh I, I I was lucky to get out this time and I'm gonna keep that you know you know most of the stuff I did especially out here in Oregon was dirtbag shit you know property crime stealing from people people that things that people worked hard for you know paid a lot of you know and and I was taking that shit you know sticking it in my arm and it was out of line it was uh it was it was cowardly it was rude it was it was just disrespectful and uh, it's opened my eyes to a lot of my old behaviors you know and uh I don't I don't choose to go down that road no more you know do you still sometimes I mean just just being honest do you steal at all anymore do I steal no I don't hey uh this is what's crazy though the other day I was at Albertsons and uh there was a bike sitting out front, man, yeah. and this somebody who was with us kind of dared me to jump on it. I jumped on it, took it, and it was like an episode of Cops. Cops. It was a bait bike. They were watching it. Uh -huh. They were watching it go down, and I jumped on a bait bike and, and rode across the parking lot on it. Nah. So I did. I had to do 12 days in jail, but I got out about two weeks ago. Nah. That right there was just, uh, cinches me my thoughts on I do not want to be in prison anymore you know because well, doing no, times is just not for me you know that 12 days was miserable you know, you know? but no other than that I haven't I haven't done no dirt since I've been out man uh, I don't I don't want to really you know about, it's harder it's harder to be bad than it is to be good you know mm. you know it's harder to be bad than it is to be yeah good. it's not hard to be good you know do you have any do you have any things like addiction issues going on Right now? Yeah. 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 Is that like cigarettes, alcohol? Well, I'm, I, I, well I smoke cigarettes, uh, and I should quit. I got 18 years of not smoking underneath me, and not one drag, and then I started smoking again. But it retarded. <coughs> uh, but uh, I do meth on a daily basis, and uh, and I'm struggling with some heroin addiction right now. I never messed with that my, all, my, all my years. In the last, like, about a year, I started messing with it, you know? And I don't know why, because I never really liked it, and I really kind of don't now. But I got myself strung out, and uh, I kicked uh, probably like four months ago. And then uh, uh, the last few weeks, I've been uh, chipping again here and there, you know. And uh, the last two days I've done none, I've been on suboxone, you know. Suboxone is what helps you get off that stuff? Yeah, it's like the new methadone. Methadone is basically a word for getting off drugs, or? No, methadone is a, is a substance that they give you to, it replaces the, to, it stops you from having the withdrawals of heroin, you know, but then the withdrawals from it are, 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 are more extreme than the withdrawals from heroin, so it's got down effects too, you know, and that, sub, suboxone is the new, the new methadone, it's, you can't OD on it, you can't die on it, so, in methadone you can, it's very easy to die on, so, uh, and it's prescribed, you can have it in your house. The doctors will give you like, only 24 milligrams is the highest dosage that you can be prescribed, but it's not something you can OD on. And the addiction is hard to kick, but it's better than heroin. So eventually, more than likely, you're gonna die doing heroin, you know? Wow. I'm just curious why, if, isn't, isn't doing those drugs expensive? Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, I like to get high, you know. I, I was telling my brother, uh, this was before the heroin shit. It was just meth, but I was telling my brother, I said, for being happier than I ever been in my life, bro, I sure do a lot of drugs, man. <laughs> I don't get it, you know. And uh, and I still ain't figured it out, you know, other than I like to get high. I just don't really, I don't know what my issues are with dope, you know. I just always had one. So, all right, right on. Uh, do you... Uh is your brother free? Is he do, is he doing drugs? No, he's uh he's been clean for 12 years. He used to do meth here in this town, but he's been uh, clean and sober for 12 years. I don't, well, I, I don't I don't mean to get religious on you. I'm just being honest. Do you feel like uh, understanding God is a good thing? Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, very helpful. I I. I 
I kind of wondered, you know, according to the Bible and everything, and there's all, you know, you're forgiven for all your sins and everything, but then there's there's certain things that are that are that are almost unforgivable, like the Ten Commandments and shit, like, with murder and other things, and uh, I pretty much violated everything there is. I I I'll, I wonder if uh, I wonder if it's all. But I still will be. I'll still be a believer, and I'll still take my dues when they come, if that's maybe the case. But I wanted to do. Am I? Am, have I burned myself? You know? Am I? Is it too late? I, you know? And uh, but I still. But it doesn't. It's not going to change me. It's not going to sour me to the fact that I don't believe in God anymore. You know? I just know that I have. Uh, I have some things answered for you know. Well, you know, Paul. Yeah. You know, I don't think Jesus is the only example. He's a really good example. But to go back there, Paul, he killed lots of people. He killed Christians. And Jesus, supposedly, you know, during the road to Damascus, he saw a light and was speechless for three days, and that's when he stopped. And then he became one of the most ardent disciples of Christ from that point on. And he even wrote about going to God and asking forgiveness, and if you truly believe in it, there's, God doesn't want to hold a grudge against us. He wants us to do what's best for everybody, and as long as we're doing that, past is the past. It may not be that way as in the law, <coughs> in our applications, but spiritually, there's no eternal condemnation if we turn away from uh, to what we're really made out of. Because that's what I think we're really made out of that, and when we align ourselves with that, we just feel better. I was telling Karen, it's like a tree that grows to the sky, it's just doing what it's supposed to do. Whereas humans, we have a choice, and we can, instead of growing for this right, we can go like this and get all negative. But the thing inside us really just wants us to do what we're deep down supposed to do. What? I think God forgives you. Yeah. I want you. You're a good man. And the only reason I'm not, I'm not going to hug you is I don't want to be contagious. I don't have COVID 19. But my hug is so good. <laughs> Dear, you're beautiful, man. I love you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Yeah. Thanks for spending time with us. Yeah, that goes to the same point. I mean, it's somebody who's just a rotten son of a bitch throughout his whole existence, and then at the last minute begs for forgiveness, is he granted that forgiveness versus a guy who 20, 25 years of his life, he was, he was a dickhead, but then for the last however many he was left, he did everything he could to be good. Maybe a little small blunder here and there, but something like the dumbass bike thing. But but did everything. Did, do I got the same thing coming as that guy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I feel like, uh, well, I'll tell you my, my opinion on it is that once, when I started giving my life to God, which was pretty recently, you know, really dedicated, really trying to do it, I started noticing more subtle things about myself that I want to correct. <laughs> And I'm still doing that. So I feel like the quicker the better. But as far as uh, once we do it, I feel like God is on our side 100%. Yeah, like I noticed little things now, like things about myself that I wouldn't have noticed before. And it took a while for me to understand. Like, yeah, I don't like that part about myself. You know, how I talk to people sometimes. Or stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, that's my answer. I feel like it's all... It's all a fair playing field, and uh, like 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 a parent who wants all their children to be happy. If you stop doing those things that you know cause a lot of problems for themselves, then the parent is really happy. And then there's a story in the Bible where a hundred sheep, ninety-nine of them never strayed, one strayed, and the shepherd was more happy for the one that came back than for the ninety-nine who never strayed. He even goes out to look for him. He leaves the others to go look for him. And more of sheep at one time or another. Uh, brother, I see you coming home. Not up there right now. But you're on the right track. Uh, I really think you're a very kind and special person. Thank you. I don't want the temptation. I'm not going to invite you to my home right now. But if you should be in my neighborhood, you can have a bite to eat. Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, hey man. All right, man. Tape, man. Nice to meet you. What was your name? Jeremy. Jeremy, Darren. Darren, what's your last name? Darren, I'm okay. Can I send this to you? Sure.
Uh, email or? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, or, or whatever. I, actually, I'll give you an address.